Hello everyone, hopefully you already watched the video Mrs. Gage made, which talked about cutting your paper in half and then rolling it up to make a totem pole. And she taught you how to mix paper mache and she taught you how to uh, rip it, which is super important. Don't ignore the ripping part because you get a much better, better smooth surface to draw and paint on for your um, totem pole. This is the second building video. Now, um, the one Mrs. Gage made is really, really good if you are a big drawer or painter because it doesn't have a lot of extra pieces um i know she encouraged you in the video to make more pieces but i'm letting you know that if you don't want to make as many it gives you the opportunity to be, have, be able to have a lot of surface to draw on so she made one that looked like this and she had a nose and then she encouraged you to put a couple more pieces and if you put a nose and just a couple just a few more not a lot it gives you a lot of flat surface for you to draw and paint so if you're a drawer and a painter that might be the way you want to go but if you're really into like building more complex forms with your pieces i would um encourage you to do something a little bit different and both look really good by the way if you're great at painting, I would definitely say go the painting route and decorate your totem pole uh, with more painting, like some of the artists that we looked at. And if you like a lot of the 3D and less painting, then go ahead and go with more of this uh, 3D build that we're about to do. So I didn't cut my paper like Miss Gage in half. I cut it about a third so that I had more to work with and I would have a shorter little totem pole. Um, we went ahead and closed it just like Miss Gage did, and we're going to close it in half. I'm going to encourage you that as we paper mache, sometimes these things fall apart, to not just put tape here and here, because we're adding a lot to ours, and we're going to make this a little bit heavier than the other one. And it's going to take us longer to build, so we can't paper mache right away, and um, things might fall apart. So instead of just one here and one here, I would like you to add some that actually go across the top into the inside on both sides but you see this side I taped the inside here where it's flat but I left this one open that's not a good idea just because we want to build start learning to build with really strong structure since our first sculpture so we want to put tape on both so that that little tab is not there and it really holds in place I added a long one in the middle after those other two and then i also i don't know if you can see it in the video added one in the inside weight at the bottom so just that i have really strong structure to begin with and that's something we always want to do in sculpture so i cut a couple pieces here ready to go uh, miss gage showed you a really good nose and that's really long and it was kind of broad so that's a really good design to start with i would actually encourage that kind of nose a lot because these are long structures and it would um, look kind of good so i made one here where I just cut a rectangle and I just simply fold it in half. And that'll give you a nose that looks like this. You know, you can see from the top here, you can just put a piece of tape, no big deal, and a piece of tape at the bottom because we are going to paper mache it, so no big deal. So that's a kind of nose that you can attach there. I also made a basic triangle. And I can fold that triangle in half. And it gives me this kind of nose. And again, I would make them bigger like Miss Gage did. Unless you want to, you know, go crazy with other parts. But that's just a basic triangle nose. This right here is a diamond with a longer top and then the shorter one, I guess. So um, I would fold this in half and that would give me that kind of nose. You know, more like a human type nose. So that's that kind of nose. I also have this nose where I took a broad rectangle and I folded them in like this, you know, toward the center. So they're folded into the center like this and then I folded these corners outwards just right from the corner where it starts at the top and I folded them outwards and this, is, this will give me a more kind of squared nose except it's flat at the top and then it's squared at the bottom and then when I tape it down that's a shape it'll keep. That's a shape it'll keep. So those are just different ideas. Again this doesn't have to be a nose. You can totally you know make this part your nose and these could be like side kind of arm looking things. You can rotate it however you want. But it's just a basic concept of one side could be flat and the other side could be 3D. So when it's on, it kind of looks like that. You know, it gives you that tapering edge. So that's a different build. Um, I thought this might be interesting if I make this right here like that for my nose. Or arms or sides, whatever you want. And then I make a slightly smaller one. And then a slightly smaller one. And I have this stair step 
type technique going on. So think about stuff like that. Try to be very creative with your folds. Um, here I thought giant eyelashes maybe. So I made a um, like a like a letter D, and then I folded the letter D up, and a little tab. Then I took a pair of scissors and I just cut, 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 cut right along that little line that I folded. I just cut these little tabs so that when I put it on my piece, it can bend with it. It could just bend. And when I build, especially with uh, paper, I love little tabs so that they're very easy to tape on because, and sorry, my tape has been sitting on the edge for a while, but so it's not flat. I can very easily put tape really quickly instead of trying to get pieces. Sometimes I push a tab down and some up so that I can add another piece of tape inside and have a very strong structure. So remember, I'm going to just talk about strong, 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 strong structures all year long. So we might as well start getting it used to it. Here is a um, wing part that's very traditional of totem poles. With this one, I made my wing part. And before you stick it on, I would really encourage you to make one, trace it, and cut a second one to make sure you're both are the same size. So anyway, I did the same thing as before. I folded it down and I made a nice crease. Then I took my pair of scissors and I cut little tabs in it. Now, for this not to go like this on me when I'm trying to build, I would definitely push one tab back, one forward, one back, one forward, one back, and the other one forward. So that when I tape it, I can put tape here, and then I can put tape here. And then that'll give me a real strong kind of hold on my wing, and it'll make it easier to paper mache. Remember, you can turn them any way you want. It doesn't have to be traditional. You know, these could, you know, step ladder. You could do whatever basically you want with these. We're going to leave the top alone because at the end, our goal is going to be to stack all these up. So leave your tops and bottoms alone so that we can actually stack them up like giant totem poles. Um, I cut a rectangular strip, just rectangle. I folded it in, in half, kind of like that, but not crease, kind of just fold it in half. And I took my pair of scissors and I cut a bunch of tabs again. This is going to allow me to overlap one on top of the other, kind of like that. I'm just going to overlap them. And I'm going to create like a little circle type looking thing so that I can stick different little, almost Frankenstein looking little knobs on here. They could be eyeballs. They could be just a pattern that they get bigger and bigger as your piece goes on. It could be a lot of things. But that's just a different option of making a round little bolt looking thing. I made this triangle right here. And I folded my triangle in half. And this could be a rectangle, could be anything. I just like tapering edges. It's just my thing. But I folded it in half and then I opened it and I cut a bunch of little tabs on it with a pair of scissors. So that I can go around my piece and I can wrap around it and have a piece that does that so whenever this all paper mache it's going to look like it grows from nothing and this piece just grows out i wonder if it's looking good on the video is that a better view but this I'll, see if i try to stick it like this just stick it on there it won't turn with my object and we have to remember we're working with a round object so if i do them like this it'll turn with it because these little things start overlapping each other as it turns so it'll go like that, you know, give me that piece. It can be like this. I can go like this with it and create that kind of turn. I mean, you can turn it however you want, but these little tabs allows it to take the form of the piece. Uh, we've been talking a lot about uh, little tabs. So this is the last piece I made where I can go like this and just tab it. It could be, you know, they could be eyebrows and I could just add a piece on top. I could just add tape because it's going to be paper mache anyway. Um, so you know, it could be like this. You could turn it around. You could um, make it flat here at the top and just tape it. And you can add little cuts in it and make it turn. So the point is, little tabs cut into it are going to make us turn corners and turn our actual physical piece. Um, back and forth little tabs are going to make our pieces project out quite a bit stronger when we hold them onto our piece. Uh, sorry, my hands were in the way. So when we hold it onto our piece, um, and again, get creative with your shapes and just try to get, I guess, challenge yourself as much as you can with this build. 
All right, guys, I hope you have fun. I'm not sure why I went blurry.